Hey guys, welcome back to The Curly Reader. My name's Amanda and today I have a very different video for you. Today I want to talk about the things that I am planning on using or I am currently using for my three children this year as we embark on our very first year of homeschooling. So due to all the craziness that is going on right now, we made the decision, my husband and I, to pull our kids from public schools this year and we are homeschooling this year. Now I have a first grader, a fourth grader, and a fifth grader this year that I am homeschooling for the first time as well as a brand new three-year-old here in the house. So um, he is quite the distraction sometimes, but we're learning how to cope with that and embracing the journey. Um, but I found some really fun things that I wanted to share with you guys. And these are what I'm planning on using with my kids. Um, I know this is going to be a very probably small percentage of my typical audience is going to be interested in this, but I wanted to put this out there because I know that there was some interest and I have had some questions on what I'm using. So I figured I would just kind of show you and I'm just going to do it all in one video. It may end up being lengthy, um, but we're just going to do it. So without further ado, um, the reason I decided to do this all in one video rather than splitting it into grade level videos is because a lot of the stuff I'm using the same thing for all the kids. So it's just easier to do it this way. The first thing I wanted to share with you is our read aloud. So currently we are reading aloud the first book in the Wingfeather Saga. This is On the Edge of This Dark Sea of Darkness by Andrew Peterson. Um, this is a book that just has been highly, highly pushed. Um, not pushed, but I've just, I've praised, highly praised. Um, I've heard so much good about this book. So I went ahead and ordered it, one, because I love the color, and two, because I've just heard amazing things about it. And we are currently, well, let's see, pull this out, that far into it. So we have that much left. Um, I'm going to be completely honest. I don't know if this is the best book to do for a read aloud. It is a fantasy book and there are a lot of made up words in this book and it makes it very difficult sometimes to read out loud um, as a parent, not as a professional audiobook narrator. Um, so I don't know, but we are enjoying it. It is a little slow right now. It is the first book in a series, so there is a lot of world building, um, but we are committed to finishing it through. Um, after this, we are going to be reading Wish Tree um, together, and you'll see why here in a little bit, but I decided to go ahead and do this one next. I'm excited about this one. I've read this one before. This one isn't gonna take as long to get through, um, so I'm excited about that. Um, but I think that this is going to go really good with the reason why, um, which, like I said, we'll discuss in a short moment. And then after that, we will be getting into, I'm going to be reading, this is the Betsy Tacey series by Maud Hart Lovelace. I read the first six or seven books in this series last year as part of the Betsy Tacey read along. And I am so excited to start reading from the beginning these books with my kids. Um, this is actually a compilation of the first four books. The first book takes place when Betsy and Tacy are five years old. It follows their friendship. And we actually live in Minnesota where this is set. And Maud Hart Lovelace wrote this. It's kind of an autobiographical type of um, book. And so we actually live within like an hour and a half of where Maud Hart Lovelace lived. And so we can go and see the houses that she based these stories off of and the places that she based these stories off of. Um, and so we are going to plan on doing that. So I'm going to start with Betsy Tacey and I'm hoping by the spring, we'll have a few other books thrown in the mix as well. But I wanna th get through at least the first four by the spring and then in the spring we'll go and we'll tour the Betsy Tacey house and get to see where all these um, events took place and that sort of thing. And I thought that that would be a really fun thing to do with the kids. I'm so excited about this. I loved the first four books of this. Um, I know when we did the read along that the hosts were saying, you know, if you like Anne of Green Gables, you'll love Betsy Tacey. I actually, I prefer Betsy Tacey to Anne of Green Gables. Probably not the popular opinion, but I loved these stories, especially the younger ones, which is also not a popular opinion, but I'm excited to share these with my kids. And I think this will be an absolutely just fun thing to do with them, especially since we can go see where, you know, the setting of the book. 
So these are the three books that we're doing, currently have plans for, for read alouds. Those are read alouds. Um, and then moving into independent readers for my fourth and fifth grader. Currently, my fourth grader is reading Wish um, by Barbara O'Connor. This is, I assigned these books to the girls to read. They're allowed to read their own things independently as well, but I do have some assigned independent reading for them. And this is the book that I picked out for my fourth grader. Um, and then my fifth grader is reading Esperanza Rising. So these are the books that they're starting with ooh, um, for this year. And then we will move on from there and I will keep you posted as to what they're reading. I might allow them to do book reviews on the channel as well. All right. Um, let's stick with language arts. So the rest of language arts, um, for my fourth and fifth graders, currently we are using Spectrum workbooks. Um, I have the writing and language arts workbooks for fourth and fifth grade that we're using. Um, I like these. I like the way that they're laid out. Um, I like that it's simple. It's straight to the point. They have practice. It goes through the um, common core standards or the current state standards is what it says. Um, because we are not planning on doing this forever, we do plan for our kids to go back into the school system. It's very important for us to make sure that they are staying on track with what is supposed to be being learned each year um, with the standards. So that is what we chose to do for language arts and writing. Um, we are also doing handwriting and we chose to do, this is not the handwriting book. Let me go grab the handwriting book. Um, but we chose to do the Good and the Beautiful's handwriting curriculum. Um, this is actually a PDF that I printed out. Um, we have a laser printer at home, and so it's cheaper for me to just pay for the PDF and print it out. Um, but my fourth and fifth graders are doing the cursive level fours. Uh, is it level four? Which level is it? Level four. They're both doing level four cursive. And then my first grader is doing level one printing for um, their handwriting and I like it because you have the handwriting but then there are fun things to do as well at the bottom. In the level four there is mostly cursive but they do reinforce the printing in a few sections as well as long as well as having those um, activities at the bottom to do. So that is what we chose to do for handwriting. Okay, for spelling, we are actually utilizing um, typing.com, which is a free website that you can go to. You can actually sign up as a homeschool parent and set up a classroom, which is what I've done. Um, so we are using this for typing, but we're also using it for spelling. They have spelling curriculum in there where they will go through each week and they will explain the Greek or Latin base word or root words, root uh, letter groupings, I don't know, um, and what they mean. And then you have a series of spelling words that are based off of that. So for example, we did M the first week, I am, and the kids had to spell impatient and improper and things like that. Um, so they have a list of 10 spelling words. They have different activities that they do. And then I also have a website that I found where I create spelling worksheets based off of the same spelling list from um, typing.com. And I create written spelling practices for them to do as well because I think that that's important. Um, and then on Fridays we do spelling tests. The way that we're doing it right now is if they get it wrong on their spelling test, it carries over to the next week. So for example, this week, one of the girls, this is only for my fourth and fifth graders, one of the girls has 11 words and one of the girls has 10 words because one of them missed a spelling word last week. And so the, th the thought behind that is that eventually, through all the repetition, they will learn the words. So that is what we are utilizing for spelling and it's going really, really well. Um, I will link anything I can down below. All of it will be linked down below. Now for my first grader, we're doing something a little bit different. We are doing sight words with her. So I have printed off, I found this resource. My air conditioner is gonna kick off. I found this resource online where I could print off, I think it's like 200 some sight words and I'm really trying to work on those with her. So we're doing sight words. I tape them to the wall and then we kind of point to them and she remembers them and then I rearrange them all over the wall and we that's kind of how we do it. We work on that throughout the week. And then the following Monday, I do flashcards with her and whatever one she gets right, those get taken off the wall and whichever ones she doesn't, they stay on the wall and we just keep adding to it throughout the week and then we do it again the next week. Um, so that's what we're doing for sight words. 
All right, and then for her, for her language arts, we are actually, right now, we are using Reading Eggs, um, which is an app that you can either access via the computer or on a tablet or a phone. Um, and within that program, they have a program called Fast Phonics, which she is loving. Um, it's just going through and really reinforcing the letter sounds and the phonics and digraphs and trigraphs and blends and the different sounds that you need to read. Um, and she's really liking that. We That will not go for very much longer, um, but that's what we're doing right now just to kind of, like I said, reinforce those things that she learned last year in kindergarten but hasn't really been practicing very much over the summer and just retraining her mind for that and then once she gets done with that we are planning on doing using the good and the beautiful's language arts curriculum i do not have that yet however on the good and the beautiful's website there are free downloads for their language arts curriculum for k through fifth grade um, you can purchase the curriculum as well which I would recommend doing if you can. However, a lot of their stuff is out of stock. A lot of homeschool curriculum across the board is out of stock right now. Um, and so I love that they are making it available via PDF because then I can print it off. Even if I just print off a few lessons at a time, I, you don't have to print off all of it at once um, because it can be rather intensive. Um, it is a lot of material to just print off and try to organize. Um, however, because we have the resources to do that right now, that's what I'm planning on doing for them. Also, I will mention that if we find, as we're going through these with the older girls, if we're finding that they, it's just not working for us, our backup plan is to use the Good and the Beautiful's um, language arts curriculum with them as well. So that is the game plan for language arts. Moving on to math. The math curriculum that we chose to use this year is Singapore Dimensions. Um, this is the work textbook and the workbook for fourth grade part A. Um, they do have, it's broken into two sections. So there's A and B. A is first semester, B is second semester, or first half and second half. Um, we decided, I did placement tests with each of my kids and we decided to just stick with their grade levels. So my first grader is doing 1A, fourth grader is doing 4A, fifth grader is doing 5A. They're all doing dimensions. Um, if I'm gonna be completely honest, the reason we chose dimensions over any of the other Singapore curriculums is because it was prettier and I like the colorfulness of it and the way that it was laid out. I will say after using this for a couple of weeks, it's a lot. Um, it is rather long each day for the kids. So we have actually, because the way it's laid out is that there's the textbook, you go through the textbook work, and then there's the workbook that you then go to for extra exercise. That was too much for my kids. So what we have been doing is we use the textbook and if I think after going through it with them, if I think they need more practice, then we go to the workbook. But if they have the concept down, we just move on. Um, because it was very tedious for even my older girls who are really great at math. Actually, all of my girls are really strong in math. Um, and so it was just too much for them. And so that's why we decided to do that. But other than that, this is working well for us right now um, and we are planning on continuing into the second semester. I will say this stuff is back ordered and it takes a long time to ship. So that's something to take into consideration. I'm actually currently getting ready to put, I only ordered the first half of the year because I wanted to see how it went. And I am considering ordering the second half of the year like this week, um, just to make sure that I get it in time. So that's math. All right, history. Let's get into history. So the first thing is that I wanted to do some sort of government or election study with my kids. Um, with the presidential election coming up, I just thought it would be very um, time relevant. It would be relevant to them to do something that was centered around elections. And so I found this free um, election guide to the elections. It's an election curriculum from Sunlight. Um, I did a Pinterest search for election stuff, and this is one that came up. It is just a guide to elections in the United States of America. It is put out by Sunlight, which is a curriculum company. And I love, love this curriculum for my older girls specifically. My younger one will sit in. Sometimes when we throw in little extra things, I'll like throw on a video or we'll read a book, like a picture book with them, and she'll sit in on that. 
but I love this curriculum for my older kids. Um, this curriculum goes through what is a democracy compared to other types of government. Um, let's, it has them read the entire Declaration of Independence and try to pull out content from it. It talks about the Constitution and the Re American Revolution and why that was a thing. And then it gets into the branches of government, the federal, local, you know, federal, state, and um, local governments, what those all mean, what their rights are. And then we really get into what is an election? How have elections changed over the years? How have voting rights changed over the years? Um, in one section, it has you interview a family member, or neighbor, or someone else older and ask them how have elections changed over the years? So what was it like the first time that you voted? Um, who were the people running for office? How old were you? Things like that. Um, I just absolutely love this. It also has an electoral college map and on election night you can sit down with your kids and go through like how which states have which number of votes in the electoral college and it talks about the two different political parties. There's just so much in here and I I love it. I love every everything about this. I love for my kids. It was exactly what I was looking for for their age. It has been absolutely perfect. And then, like I said, we have been adding in um, videos here and there or books here and there. Um, some of my favorite books that I have found to um, supplement this curriculum with are, let's pull them over here. Um, the first is Equality's Call by, um, let's see, by Deborah Deason. Um, this is the story of voting rights in America and it just goes through all of the different big amendments that changed voting rights and why they were important. And then in the back, it talks about different activists and who they were when they were active, um, the different amendments and when they were passed. Um, this was even super informative for me, but it's just a picture book. And it was, it's been amazing for my kids. Another one that I like, um, and this is more government than specifically election, but this is free for you and me, what our first amendment means. And this is by Christy Mahali. Um, and this is once again, another picture book, um, but it just talks about the different, the first amendments and which rights are in the first amendment and what it means um, in simple terms that kids can understand. I'm trying to flip to a page that actually like has one of the amendments on it um and I can't find one so um but I love that because anything that can put it in simple terms that they understand um speaking of that I picked up the Constitution decoded a guide to the document that shapes our nation by Katie Kennedy this I love for my older girls um this has the entire Constitution the original text broken down line by line and a translation for the kids on what it actually means. So let's see, here we have Article 1, Section 6, and for example, like here's a place and it says, and for any speech or debate in either house, they shall not be questioned in any other place. And then over here we go to the translation and it says, and they can't be punished for their speeches or debates anywhere else either. So it just takes what is actually in the Constitution and it puts it in words that the kids can actually understand. And then it has a lot of like, did you know? And I love this at the bottom, it has vocabulary for each section. And it is just so informative. It's so great, um, especially for my older girls. This has been amazing just to flip through from a government standpoint. And then the last book is How Our Government Works for You When You Grow Up to Vote by Eleanor Roosevelt. And this book was written by Eleanor Roosevelt and the back of it says, someday perhaps in 10 or 12 years, you are going to vote. You will help choose the men and women to govern the country, but to vote well, you will need to know about a great many interesting things. And I just, I love that. This talks about why it's important to vote and what your government does for you and what you need to know to be an informed voter. And I think that this is just an amazing resource. So that's what I'm doing for government for the girls right now for election season um, and for history. I also have my fourth grader is doing US geography because that is something that is covered in fourth grade standards in Minnesota. I'm sure it's covered fourth grade standards in most states. Um, but for that, I am using this book called The Complete Book of Maps and Geography. Um, I will link this down below. I just got this on Amazon and it is a thick book. 
this book's thick but I like it because it goes through all of the different regions it goes through every state individually it also goes over how to read a map longitude and latitude it has a little bit of world geography at the end um, but it is super thorough and it's just great for what I needed it for and then to go along with that I also purchased the National Geographic Kids United States Atlas and this is just a kids atlas it has all the different states and information about the states um, that she can use along with her geography so that's what we're using for geography and then for fifth grade um, American history um, my fifth grader needs to learn some American history I picked up everything you need to ace American history in one big fat notebook um, this is put out by this creators of brain quest um, and so all this is I like this because it goes through the entirety of American history from the prehistory the Native Americans all the way through current events Ronald Reagan and then to the present day but in each section so like here's unit three about the American Revolution and early Republic it's written in very basic like fun it's a fun layout for the kids important words are highlighted important times and stuff are written in blue and there's a guide to that all in the very front and then once you get to a certain page let's see if I can get to well this is a long section let's see if I can okay here is check your knowledge and it has questions that you should have learned in the previous pages so I love 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 that for the kids because sometimes I don't know what questions to ask them to make sure that they're like retaining information. So I love books that have those little review sections so that I can have those conversations with the kids and I know which questions to be asking them. So that's what I'm using for history. And then for science, right now we are in the middle of doing a tree unit. So I actually, my parents were visiting a couple of weekends ago and we went on a walk on the through the woods with my dad and he was just talking and talking and talking about how much he loved like he remembers from his childhood his dad teaching him about trees and how to identify trees and which trees were which based on the bark and the leaves and all that and it just got me curious and it got me excited about it and so i need to find my stack of books about trees but i decided that we're gonna do a unit on trees and what better time than fall to do this unit hence why we are going to be doing the read aloud, the wish tree, is to go along with our tree unit because I thought that that would be appropriate because this book is told from the point of view of a tree. So for our tree unit, I am just kind of flying by the seat of my pants on this one, but I went on to my um, library's website and I just searched tree and then I filtered it down to kids books and I put on hold like 30 books about trees and then I brought them home and I went through them and I figured out okay which ones do I like which ones are not really what I was looking for and these three are my favorites that I have found so far I still have a few that I'm waiting to come in um, but hands down my favorite one that I have found is can you hear the trees talking discovering the hidden life of the forest by Peter Wollobin um, and this book goes through and I the reason that I love it is because each like page is a question and they're fun questions for kids like how do trees breathe can trees get thinner and then it goes through the entire explanation of this there's a lot of try this things like blowing into a tree like if you like get it wet and blowing into a tree like a stump or a branch and watching bubbles come out the other side and what does that mean um can trees talk why do fungi grow on trees so I just I love this because it's question and answer and it's in depth enough for my older kids but simple enough and fun enough for my little one so I love this book we are using this along with that I got the DK eyewitness tree book um, and this is just a super informative book about how trees grow um, DK is great for this type of thing simple leaves different leaves and what the differences are between simple leaves and compound leaves um, needles and scales so this just kind of goes through a bunch of different tree identification more things and more scientific and then the last one I have is the National Geographic Kids Field Guide to Trees and what this is is simply 
it has um, like species of trees and it has the leaf and it explains where they grow and what they look like. It has a picture of the tree, a picture of the leaf and just a little bit about it. And I thought that this would be really great when we get into going on a walk and finding leaves and being able to identify trees based off of that. But right at the beginning, what I like, if I can find it, is it goes through what is a tree, different types of um, parts of the tree and why they're important. It also talks about different types of leaves. So conifers, broadleaf trees, um, those are different types of trees, different types of leaves, the conifer leaves and the broadleaf leaves, um, broad leaves. Um, but yeah, so I really, really like this. So those are my three favorite books that I have found for trees so far. Um, but like I said, I have a few more coming. So that's what we're doing for science right now. After this, we are planning on doing um, The Good and the Beautiful right now has a free marine biology PDF download. Um, it is good for ages K through eight. And so we're planning on getting into that when we're done with trees. So whenever that is, I don't have a time limit. Just whenever we have tapped out of trees and we feel like we have run its, it has run its course, we'll tap in to marine biology. After marine biology, I think we may do either the human body or my oldest needs to learn about um, simple machines and the scientific process. And so we may get into that a little bit. So that's the plan for science. Um, currently what I'm doing is I'm alternating history or government and science every other day. We don't do it all every day. The only thing that we do every day is math and independent reading. And, um, and we do spelling every day because you need that repetition. Everything else is kind of on an every other day rotation. Um, and then, all right, so I'm trying to make sure I'm not forgetting anything. Um, let's see, like I said, I will have all of these resources linked down below. Um, but I think that that is the majority of what I have. I have one more thing that is just kind of a random throw in for one of my kids. One of my kids, I was really struggling with negativity, a negative mindset. She would get to her schoolwork every day and she would just go into this, I'm stupid, I can't do it, um, this is too hard, I'm dumb, that sort of mentality. And I was really, really struggling and I was becoming very frustrated because I knew she was capable of it. Um, she just couldn't get past that hump. And so I ended up ordering for her the growth mindset activities for kids. It's 55 exercises to embrace learning and overcome challenges for kids ages um, six through nine. My daughter's nine. Um, and this is by Esther Pia Cordova. I just got this off of Amazon. I saw it recommended on like a homeschool Facebook group that I'm part of. Um, and so far I've really liked what it has in it. It talks about just how the difference between a fixed mindset and a growth mindset and why they're important, why having a growth mindset is important and how when we focus on positive things, we allow our mind to grow more. Um, and so that I am using that with her as well. But yeah, I think that's everything. I think the only thing left that I didn't really touch on a lot was typing. I mentioned it when I talked about the spelling that we're using, but we are also using it for typing. Um, I am doing typing with the kids. I actually alternate every other day with doing typing and handwriting. Um, and so I figured that would be appropriate. But um, I actually even have my first grader, they have a typing, like a junior level. And so I have my first grader doing it too. And mostly for her, it gets her familiar with the keyboard and where each of the keys are on the keyboard. Um, for my older two, they're actually doing home row, like typing with their fingers on the right keys, which they hate. Um, if I had one bit of advice for parents is get your kids typing into a typing program earlier rather than later because if you do it like right now my daughter's going into fifth grade she has already established her bad typing habits and finding keys with the wrong fingers and so trying to break those habits is very very frustrating for her and for me um and it's just a hard process so getting them into a typing program earlier is definitely going to be beneficial um it is slow going at the beginning but it's fantastic for them once they get it. So um, we are using typing.com for that as well. And like I said, I love typing.com because I can go in as a homeschool parent and set up a classroom and assign them specific lesson. And I really love that. Um, so we're using that. I think that's everything. If you guys have questions about anything that we're doing, 
leave them down below. Um, I would love to answer them. This has been a process. Um, it is very mentally draining to try to figure out all the different pieces to the puzzle for each individual kid and where they're at and what they need and what they need for their state standards for the year. It's a lot. So, um, but at the same time, I'm the mom that I don't want to dump a ton of money into a really expensive curriculum because one, I don't have it. And two, we're not going to be really reusing a lot of it because we're not planning on doing this year after year after year. That's the plan as of right now. We'll see. But um, yeah, so that's where we're at with things. But like I said, if you have questions, leave them below. I will link everything that I have mentioned down below in the description box. And yeah, I think that's going to do it for me for today. So I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope that you stick around and subscribe. And I will talk to you later. See ya. Thank mm -hmm. you.